Hello everyone and welcome back to Fatal Fact. In this video, we are going to take a look at some basic logical operators in ARM assembly such as AND, Exclusive OR, Negation OR that are used to complete bitwise operation on registers. We are gonna take a look at how these operators work and in addition to that, I will show you a few basic things that we can do with these operators aside from the typical idea of, you know, comparing if two inputs are the same or not. And with these operators, we are going to look at the underlying zeros and ones that comprise values stored in particular registers and is performing manipulation on each individual bit based off of the input values. So these are the instructions that we are going to be looking today. Let's start with an operator first. So to better understand this, let me take you back to your college or university days and let's construct a truth table for an operator. This will help us understand what's going to happen with each individual bit for every instruction. Basically, a truth table is a mathematical table which is used in logic, specifically in Boolean algebra, to determine the output of a logical operation based on all possible values. So, let's have a look at a truth table for AND operator. The AND operator is a basic logical operator that returns true if all operands are true, otherwise it returns false. In this table, you can see that we have these two operands A and B and these operands can have four possible inputs that is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. As per AND operation, this will return true only if both the inputs are true. So, in the first set of input, we have 0, 0 which is going to result in 0. Then we have 0, 1 which will result in 0. Then we have 1, 0 which is again going to be 0. Then finally, we have 1, 1. So, here both the inputs are 1 and this will result in 1. So that's how the AND operation works and let's now have a look at the AND ARM assembly instruction manual. Here in the ARM documentation, we have this AND instruction which performs a bitwise AND between the register value and an immediate value and the result of the bitwise AND operation will then be stored into the destination register. So here we basically have two variations of AND instruction. First one is for 32 bit and second is for 64 bit. The only difference you see here is in the operands registers. For 32-bit version, it's using 32-bit version of the register which is denoted by W. And for 64-bit version, it's using 64-bit version of the register which is denoted by X, right? And these are the two operands followed by an immediate value which is a constant value. So the first operand is going to be our destination register and then the second operand is going to be our source register and whatever the bits or the value stored in this source register will be used to perform the bitwise AND operation with the constant or the immediate value provided here. Alright, let's program it in ARM assembly. So I am going to create a file called AND.S to perform bitwise AND operation. And firstly, we have to declare our global symbol using dot global declarative followed by the name of the symbol, which in this case I am using underscore start. Then we have to declare dot text section, which is going to contain our assembly instructions. So using dot section declarative, I am going to declare this dot text section. And inside this section, we have to define our start label. All right. Then finally, inside this start label, we are going to first use move instruction to store the value with which we want to, to store the value on which we want to perform bitwise and operation. So this is going to be our source register and I'm going to use x0 for source register and the value, let's say 43. Just a quick reminder of what we learned in the second lesson that this is our immediate addressing mode because here we are storing a constant value into the register directly, right? Then to perform the bitwise AND operation, we have AND instruction which takes three operands basically. First one is the destination register which in this case I am using x1, okay? Followed by the source register which is x0 which we have initialized with x43 right then we have to put our immediate value in this example i am going to use hex 1 as an immediate value then finally let me paste the exit routine to terminate the program normally let's save the program now and assemble it using arc 64 linux gnu assembler this will take this and dot s as the input and it will generate an intermediate object file with the name and dot o so now we got this and dot o as our intermediate object file and to generate the final executable, we have to use this linker tool, which takes this n.o as input and it will generate this n as our final executable. Let's see it in action directly using gdp command. This will take this n executable as input. Enter. First of all, let's see the disassembly of our binary using disassemble command. So these instructions are exactly the same which we programmed in our assembly program, right? 
Now to observe the behavior of this program, we have to first attach a breakpoint at the very first instruction which is present at this address. So let me copy this and using this break command, we can set a breakpoint on this address. As you can see, the breakpoint is now set to this address. Now we have to tell the debugger to start executing the program using run command. Enter. And as you can see, the breakpoint is reached. So currently the program counter is pointing to this address, which is the very first instruction of our program. And if we have a look at the registers, currently all the registers are initialized with zero. Now we have to tell the debugger to step into this instruction, which will basically execute this instruction. And as you can see, the program is counter is now incremented to the next address, which is our end instruction, which means that this instruction is now executed. And as per this instruction, hex 43 value should now be stored into hex zero register. Let's see. Yes, our hex zero register is modified and it's containing hex 43. Let's now execute this end instruction as well. Step into and now our end instruction is executed. And according to this instruction, whatever the value present in x0 register, which is x43, will be used to perform the bitwise end operation with this immediate value, which is x1. So basically, end operation was performed between x43 and x1. And the final result is stored into the destination register, which is denoted by x1 over here. So let's see what do we get in x1 register. As you see, x1 register is also modified now and it's containing x1 which is what we are supposed to get after bitwise end operation okay let's try to perform this bitwise end operation manually as well to confirm the result over here you you can see that our source register which is x0 is containing hex 43 and the binary representation of hex 43 is 1000011 then we have this immediate value hex1 whose binary representation is 00001 right for simplicity, I am showing only 32 bits of the register here, but you can assume that the rest of the 32 bits are also filled with zero. Now, if we have a look at the truth table of end again, we can see that only when both the inputs are one, then only we get one as a result. Let's apply this logic here on each individual bit. At the very first bit, which is bit zero, we have one and one. And according to end truth table, this will result in one. And this is exactly what is stored at bit zero in the destination register, right? Similarly, we have 1 and 0, which is going to be 0. So at the first bit in the destination register, we got 0. Then at the second bit, we have 0 and 0, which is going to result in 0 in the destination register. Then let's come to the sixth bit, which is having 1 and 0. So 1 and 0 is going to be 0. So in the destination register, at the sixth bit, again, we got 0. So the overall result we got is 1. Now we are not learning this just to see which bits are going to be 0 and which bits are going to be 1, right? There are obviously some use cases for these logical operations. So in this example, which we just saw, if you observe the result, we can make a conclusion that it's basically wiping all other bits while leaving only bit 0 intact, right? It does not matter what rest of the bits are, it will only consider the value present at bit 0. So you can use this operation when you want to wipe all other bits while leaving only one bit intact. However, this is not it. There is something about these immediate values which you need to know. You just cannot use any constant value. So to understand the problem here, let's see what happens when we modify the immediate value with let's say hex 15. All right, so let's modify our existing program. And over here, instead of this hex one, let's use hex 15. Save, assemble it again using assembler. And as you see this time, instead of getting this n.o as output, we got an error, which basically says that the immediate value which we have used is not in a valid range. That's because in ARM V8 architecture, the instruction length is fixed, that is 64 bits. So in the end instruction, we are only left with 13 bits to store immediate value. It's not possible to store all the values by using only 13 bits. So that's why these logical immediate instruction uses a special encoding to store these immediate value. Let me try to briefly explain you how this 13 bits are used to encode the immediate value. Consider these 13 bits. It basically gets divided into three fields. First field is denoted by zero, which is of size one bit. Then next field is denoted by IMMR, which is of six bits, followed by another field denoted by IMMS of size six bits again. Here, this IMMR is actually used to store number of rotations. So it's of size six means it can have 63 possible number of rotations. And with N and IMMS, 
they can store both element size and number of consecutive ones at the same time but we are not going into the details of this instead if you are interested i am attaching a link which describes this encoding technique in detail however what i want to show you is that they have created a ruby script which basically generates all possible combinations of valid immediate values which can be used directly within any logical instruction and this is the output of the script which i was talking about and you can use these values directly in your logical arithmetic instructions without worrying about the encoding process all right let's now talk about another variation of this and instruction where instead of using the immediate value we can use the register itself now this is also helpful to overcome the limitation of the immediate encoding technique which we just saw basically here we were not able to use this constant value directly in our end instruction right instead we had to encode it in such a way that it that it becomes valid as per the rule of immediate encoding technique but instead of doing that if you don't have a restriction on number of assembly instructions you can have in your assembly program what you can do is you can use the register value is you can use a register to store this constant value and then use that register as another source register so let's try to program that and instead of writing the whole program from scratch what i am going to do is i am going to copy our existing end program and name it as end one dot f let's modify this using vim so now let's use x2 as another source register and store this 15 in that and then in this and instruction instead of this immediate value we can use this x2 register as our another source register so now what's going to happen is whatever the values is stored in x0 and x2 that will be used to perform the bitwise and operation right let's save it and try to assemble it again and see whether it works this time or not yep we got our end one dot o as intermediate object file let's generate the final executable on it so now we got this new executable called end one let's say it in action directly using gdb if you want we can see the disassembly again using disassemble command right let's set the breakpoint at the very first instruction using break command so the breakpoint is now set to this address all we have to do now is to tell the debugger to execute the program using run command and the breakpoint is triggered program counter is currently set to this address which is the very first instruction of our program and all the register values are currently initialized with zero so as per this instruction after execution x43 should be stored into x0 register let's execute this instruction using step i command and have a look at our x0 register so yes x0 register is modified to x43 similarly let's execute the next instruction and according to this x15 should be stored into x2 register let's see yes x2 register is also modified now and it's containing x15 now we are at this instruction which is going to perform the bitwise and operation between the values stored in x0 and x2 register so basically it's going to perform bitwise and operation between 43 and 15 and the result will be stored into this x1 register so let's step over this instruction and if we observe the value in x1 register now it's modified and it's containing x1 which is exactly what we are supposed to get after performing bitwise and operation between these two values this time instead of manually performing the bitwise and operation between each bit let's use the calculator to confirm the result so make sure your calculator is in the programming mode and your input is set to hexadecimal form and over here you see we have these different bitwise operations like not and or xor currently we are dealing with end so we will use this one and what are our inputs so hex 43 we want to perform the end operation with x15 right and the result is 1 which is what we got over here right this was about end instruction let's now move on to the next logical operation called or as per or operator it returns true if at least one of the operands is true otherwise it returns false so first let's understand this with the truth table of or so again here we have these two operands a and b and according to the definition of or operator here we have 0 0 which is going to result in 0 because there is not a single one in the input then we have 0 1 and as per our definition if any one of the input is 1 then the result will also be 1 similarly next input we have is 1 0 which is again going to result in 1 and then finally we have 1 1 which is going to result in 1 again so that's how the OR operation works and let's now have a look at the OR assembly instruction manual in this ARM documentation you can see that 
to perform the bitwise or operation we have this ORR instruction which is going to perform bitwise or between a register value and an immediate value and after the operation it will store the result into the destination register right so just like and operator here also we have two versions of this instruction first one is for 32 bit version and second is for 64 bit version so the syntax is exactly similar to what we saw in the previous instruction it basically takes two opera hands first one is going to be our destination register where the result of our operation will be stored then the next two opera hands are going to contain the values between which our operation will be performed and out of these two opera hands the last one is our immediate or constant value okay let's program it in arm v8 assembly so this time i am going to create a file with the name orr.s firstly we have to declare our global symbol using dot global declarative right this will act as an entry point for the program from where it starts executing then we are going to declare dot text section using dot section declarative and this is going to contain all our assembly instructions so inside this we can define our start label and over here first we are going to use move instruction to store the value on which we want to perform bitwise or so this is going to act as our source register and for that i'm going to use x1 this time and the value let's say hex 14 okay then to perform the bitwise or operation we just saw that we have orr instruction in arm assembly and this takes basically three operands first one is going to be the destination register so let's use x0 as our destination register then our source register which is x1 right and then a constant value let's say hex1 and then finally let me paste the exit routine which is going to terminate the program normally and now we can save this program and let's try to assemble it using the assembler there we go we have this orr.o as our intermediate object file now let's use the linker to finally generate the executable so now we got this new executable called orr let's see this in action using gdb again again we can use this disassemble command to see the disassembly there you go and the first instruction is present at this address so let's set the breakpoint to this address and now we can tell the debugger to start executing the program using run command now as you can see currently the program counter is pointing to this address which is the very first instruction of our program and according to this it's going to store hex 14 into x1 before executing this instruction let's quickly have a look at the values currently stored in the registers so all the registers are currently initialized with zero right now let's tell the debugger to execute this instruction using step i command enter as you see now program counter is incremented to the next address which means that this instruction is executed and now in x1 register we should get hex 14 let's see yes x1 is modified and it is containing hex 14 now we have this or instruction which is about to be executed let's execute it again using step i command and according to this whatever the value stored in x1 register which is hex 14 will be used to perform bitwise or operation with this immediate value hex 1 and the result is stored into the destination register denoted by this x0 register so if we have a look at this x0 register now it's modified and it's containing hex 15 which is exactly what we are supposed to get after performing bitwise or operation between hex 14 and 1 let's try to perform this bitwise or operation manually as well to confirm the result over here we have our source register which is x1 register containing hex 14 so this is the binary representation of hex 14 which is 10100 then we have our immediate value hex 1 and its binary representation is 00001 right now we are supposed to perform bitwise or operation between these two binary values so let's have a look at the truth table of or again and we can see that when any one of the input is set to 1 then we will get 1 as a result right let's apply this logic here on each individual bit so at the very first bit which is bit 0 we have 0 and 1 so this will result in 1 right the resultant 1 is stored in the destination register at 0 at bit okay similarly at first bit we have 0 and 0 so according to our truth table this will result in 0 which is stored at first bit in the destination register similarly we have 1 and 0 which is going to be 1 so 1 is then stored at the second bit in the destination register then we have 0 and 0 which is going to result in 0 then coming on to the next bit so if we perform bitwise or operation between this 1 and 0 we will get 1 as the result right so in the end in the destination re register we finally got 10101 which is nothing but hex 15 
right so logical ordering is a great way to set bit high while leaving all other bits alone and this is exactly what happened over here in the destination register now whatever we discussed about the limitations of immediate value during and operation same will be applied here so make sure you choose the immediate values which are valid and as per the rules of immediate value encoding okay let's now discuss another variation of our instruction where instead of using immediate value we can use the register as the last operand and this will also help us in overcoming the limitation of using immediate values so this time again instead of writing the program from scratch i am going to copy our existing orr program into orr1.s let's modify it now using vim and over here let's keep the first instruction as it is so our first source register is going to be the x1 which is containing hex 14 and then let's use another move instruction and this time i'm going to use x2 register as our second source operand and over here let's store hex 15 so basically what we want to do is we want to perform bitwise or operation between hex 15 and hex 14 and in our or instruction instead of directly using this immediate value we can use our second source register which is x2 right so these two are now our source registers and the final result will be stored into x0 register let's save this and let's try to assemble this program again using arc linux gnu assembly orr1.s and it will generate an intermediate object file right then we have to use linker to finally generate our executable there we go so now we got this new orr1 executable file and let's examine it using gdb orr1 and we can see the disassembly of this program using this disassemble command then let's attach a breakpoint to this very first instruction which is present at this address using break command so now the breakpoint is attached to this address and then we can tell the debugger to start execution of this program using run command so as you see now our program counter is pointing to this address which is the very first instruction of our program and according to this it's going to store hex 14 into x1 register so what we can do we can tell the debugger to step over this instruction using step i command and now this instruction is executed and if we have a look at our x1 register it's modified and it's containing hex 14 right similarly the next instruction where program counter is pointing to is move and it's going to store this hex 15 value into x2 register so let's step over this instruction as well and if we observe the value of x2 it's now containing hex 15 right and now finally we are at or instruction which is basically going to perform the bitwise or operation between the value stored in x1 that is hex 14 and the value stored in x2 that is hex 15 and the final result of the bitwise or operation will be stored into this x0 register so let's step over this instruction as well and if we have a look at our destination register which is x0 it's now modified and containing hex 15 which is exactly what we are supposed to get now this time instead of manually calculating bitwise or on each individual bit what i'm going to do is again using the calculator and this time bitwise or operation is going to be between hex 14 or x 15 enter and the result is 15 right which is what we got here okay so this is it about the or operation let's now move on to the next logical operator which is exclusive or first let's understand the truth table of exclusive or operation so according to exclusive or it's the operator that returns true if and only if one of the operands is true and the other is false if both operands are same then the result is also false so if we have a look at this truth table according to the definition of exclusive or our first possible input combination is 0 0 and it's going to return 0 because both the input values are 0 here then we have 0 1 which is going to result in 1 similarly we have 1 0 which is again going to result in 1 that's because in both of these input pairs there is one value which is true and other is false finally the last possible input combination we have is 1 1 which is going to result in 0 so that's how the exclusive or operation works and let's now have a quick look at the exclusive or assembly instruction manual so as per arm v8 assembly documentation to perform the exclusive or operation we have this eor instruction okay and it's going to perform bitwise exclusive or between a register value and an immediate value and the result of the bitwise exclusive or operation will be stored into the destination register here also we have two variations of this exclusive or one is for 32 bit and another one is for 64 bit and the syntax is exactly similar to what we saw in our previous instructions the first operand is our destination register which will store the result of bitwise exclusive or then we have another operand which is going to be our source operand followed by an immediate or a constant value with which the bitwise exclusive or operation will be performed 
all right let's program it in arm v8 assembly so for this i am going to create a or.s file just like what we did previously firstly we have to declare a global symbol using dot global declarative and this will act as an entry point for the program from where it starts executing right then we are going to declare dot text section using this dot section declarative which is going to contain all our assembly instructions so inside this section we can define our start label and over here let's use move instruction initialize our first source register which in this case i am going to use x1 and let's say uh, we want to perform bitwise xor operation on x45 okay then to perform the bitwise exclusive or we have this eor instruction right and the first operand is going to be our destination register so i am going to use x0 as my destination register followed by the source register which we have initialized here that is x1 right followed by an immediate or a constant value let's say this time it's hex f okay and then finally let me paste the exit routine to terminate the program normally let's save the program now and assemble it using arc 64 linux gnu assembler followed by the name of the file and it is going to generate an intermediate object file so we now have our xor.o file which we are going to use with another tool called linker to generate the final executable so now we have a new executable with the name xor let's examine it directly in the gdb we can have a look at the disassembly using the disassemble command so now we first have to tell the debugger to set a breakpoint at the first instruction which is present at this address so let's copy it and using this break command we can set a breakpoint that's it now using run command we have to tell the debugger to start executing this program there we go and now you see the program counter is actually pointing to this address which is the very first instruction of the program and according to this instruction it's going to store hex 45 into x1 register so let's step over this instruction and and see what do we get in x1 register now so x1 register is now containing hex 45 right then the program counter is now pointing to the next instruction which is our eor instruction that is going to perform the exclusive or operation between the value stored into x1 register which is hex 45 with this hex f let's step over it the result should now be stored into this x0 register let's see yes in x0 register we now have hex 4a which is exactly what we are supposed to get let's try to perform this bitwise xor operation manually as well to confirm the result so over here this is our source register x1 which is containing hex 45 and its binary representation is 1000101 then we have our immediate value which is hex f and its binary representation is 1111 right what we are going to do now is to perform bitwise exclusive all means we are going to perform exclusive or operation on each of these individual bits as per the truth table of xor so let's quickly have a look at the truth table of xor again and we can see that when any one of the input is set to one and other input is set to zero then only we will get one as a result right let's apply this logic here firstly at bit zero we have one and one so this is going to result in zero right the resultant zero is now stored in the destination register at the zeroth bit okay similarly at the first bit we have zero and one and according to XOR truth table, this is going to result in 1 which is stored at the first bit in the destination register. Similarly, we have 1 and 1 which is going to be 0. Then at the third bit, we have 0 and 1 which is going to result in 1 which is again stored into the destination register. Similarly, coming to the sixth bit which is having 1 and 0. And if we perform exclusive OR operation on these two bits, we will get 1 as the result, right? So as a result, we now got 1001010, which is hex 4a in hexadecimal. Now, what could be the use case for this? Just observe the result here. If you see closely, you observe that it's actually flipping the bits from high to low or low to high. For example, here, it has flipped 0 to 1 in the result without affecting other bits. Another useful case could be, if you XOR a value with itself, it will result in zero always. Because of this nature, this operation is used in almost every encryption and hashing algorithms. Again, whatever we discussed about the limitations of immediate value in the previous operation, same will be applied here. So make sure you choose the immediate values which are valid and as per the rules of immediate value encoding. Okay, let's now discuss another variation of this exclusive OR instruction where instead of using immediate value, we are going to use register as the last operand. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to copy our existing XOR program into a new file called XOR1.s. Let's modify this XOR1.s. And this time, this is going to be our first source operand. And now I'm going to use another move instruction to initialize another source register. 
for that i'm going to use x2 let's initialize it with let's say hex 15 okay now in the eor instruction all we have to do is replace this immediate value with another source register which is x2 so these two now are our source operands or the source registers and the bitwise exclusive or operation will be performed on the values stored in these registers right let's save it and let's try to assemble this program using the assembler all right we got xor1.o which is our intermediate object file so let's use the linker on top of it to generate our final xor1 executable there we go again using gdb let's examine this executable and using disassemble command we can see the disassembly right so the very first instruction is actually present at this address so we can use break command to tell the debugger to set a breakpoint on this and then using run command we can start execution now our program counter is pointing to the first instruction which is going to store hex 45 into x1 register let's step over it and see what do we get in x1 register x1 is modified to hex 45 right let's again step over to the next instruction and according to this hex 15 should now be stored into x2 register let's see yes x2 register is also modified and it's containing hex 15 now our program counter is at eor instruction which is basically going to perform the bitwise exclusive or operation between the values stored in x1 and x2 which are 45 and 15 respectively and the result will be stored into this x0 register so let's quickly step over this instruction as well and see what do we get in x0 register our x0 register is now containing hex 50 which is exactly what we are supposed to get now again this time let's use calculator to calculate this bitwise xor operation so over here if you notice we have this xor button which is going to perform the exclusive or operation so our first input is x45 xor we want to perform the xor with hex 15 right so the result we get is 50 all right that's all about the exclusive or operation let's now move on to the next and final logical operation which is negation or bitwise not as the name suggests it will simply perform a negation operation means it will inverse the bits of a register value to the destination register in simple terms the binary value 0 becomes 1 and 1 becomes 0 let's first have a look at arm architecture manual for this operation so to perform this bitwise not we have mvn instruction in arm assembly okay and it's going to basically do the inverse of a register value into the destination register right so just like all other previous logical op operators here also we have two variations one is for 32 bit and other one is for 64 bit and the syntax is a little bit different over here it only takes two arguments or the two operands just ignore this shift and amount it's part of the value which is going to be stored into this register okay so basically we are left with the two registers first one is as usual our destination register and the other one is our source register okay and that's all this instruction requires so basically whatever the value is stored in this register it will do the inverse of it basically it will flip the bits and store it into this destination register all right let's try to write a simple assembly program to demonstrate this and for that i'm going to create a new file called mvn.s as usual firstly we are going to declare a global symbol using dot global declarative followed by declaring dot text section and inside this we are going to define our start label firstly let's use move instruction to store a value into the source register so for the source register i am going to use x1 register and the value i am going to pick is hex 45 okay then to perform the bitwise not operation we have mvn instruction right we just saw the syntax of it firstly it takes the destination register so for that i am going to pick x0 as my destination register followed by the source register which we have just defined over here that is x1 and that's it let me paste the exit routine to terminate the program normally and now we can save this program and let's try to assemble it using the assembler mvn.s and it's and it's going to generate an intermediate object file and then using linker we are going to generate our final executable there we go okay let's use gdb one last time to examine this executable so again using the disassemble command we are going to have a quick look at the disassembly of this executable and the first instruction is present at this address let's attach a breakpoint using break command and tell the debugger to start executing this program using run command so now our program counter is at this address which is the very first instruction and according to it it's going to store hex 45 into x1 register let's quickly step over it and see what do we have in x1 register so it's modified now and containing hex 45 right then 
we have this mvn instruction which is basically going to perform the bitwise not operation on the value stored in this x1 register which is hex 45 so let's execute it using a step i command and the value is now stored into the destination register which is x0 let's see yes our x0 register is now modified and it's containing this long hexadecimal value and this is exactly what we are going to get after performing bitwise not operation on hex 45 so to explain it what i'm going to do is i'm going to use calculator again and we had this hex 45 as our source value right and if you have a look over here in the at the binary representation of this hex 45 you see currently all the higher bits are zero bit six two and zero bits are only set to one now according to bitwise not operation it flips the value right which means all these zeros will become one and all these one becomes zero correct in order to perform not operation we have to apply not first and then the value which is hex 45 enter you see we got this f f f f f f f f f b a and at the binary representation also you can see all the bits are flipped as expected right this is it for this lesson let me know in the comment section whether this arm assembly series is useful for you or not and whether you are enjoying watching such videos and in the next video we are going to see how to perform logical shift and rotations in arm v8 so stay tuned for that